She has a past and a story. She has been through a lot and does have a lot to say. She is tired of being in a cage, but she notices the doors open and she's finally ready to break free. Join me, Karina Garcia, as I share the different things that may hold you captive to an enslaved mindset, where you were really never meant to stay and you really, honestly, were never meant to be in. Life is hard. Our choices do have consequences, both good and bad, but love is real and it's true. Jesus Christ always provides a way out. Hola, and welcome to the She Breaks Free and She Believes podcast. I'm your host, Karina Garcia. Have you ever wanted something so much you could taste it? I think that's saying, right? I know that when I walk into any place where, the, where food is being cooked or baked, I can close my eyes, I smile really big, and I can taste what's cooking or baking. Even though I haven't tasted anything, I can taste it just with the smell. Has that ever happened to you? Even at home. But have you ever wondered what would happen if you take the food out too early or too late? In today's episode, we will talk about breaking free from our timing and trusting that even if we're enticed by the smell, it's important that we wait for the right time. And on the opposite side, even if we're afraid to taste it, we have to trust that God knows that's the right recipe and the right time. Timing may be defined differently by every person. And sometimes timing can lead to becoming impatient. I remember growing up, whenever we'd go to restaurants, my dad would get frustrated if the line was long to the point where he'd be like, no, it's not moving. There is no way for us to get moved up. There's nothing I can do to make it faster. We're leaving. And we would literally get up and we'd leave. No matter if we were dressed and ready or we really wanted to try the food there, we were excited. We weren't going to wait in line forever because he just couldn't for him. It, the timing did not match what he was expecting. I don't see myself too impatient when it comes to restaurants or, you know, waiting in line. I'm pretty good at that, but I do have moments where timing is important to me. Like, for example, with technology. Oh, if technology slows down or it doesn't work or it doesn't do what it was intended to do at the speed or the timing that I'm expecting it to, I can get irritated because for me, your technology, you're created to work faster than me. You're supposed to work faster than me. Why aren't you working faster than me? So I can get irritated sometimes or frustrated because it's not doing what it's supposed to do at the time it's supposed to do or actually at the time that I'm wanting it to do it, right? And the other one is customer service. I think I've talked about customer service before and how that's a pet peeve of mine because I do love and appreciate the people. And on both sides, I understand as a customer service rep, there's only so much you can do because you're only given so much authority, permission, even access to certain things. But that doesn't excuse a customer service agent or rep from being kind, courteous, and even saying, you know what, sir or ma'am, I'm not sure about that, but I can look into that for you and get a response to you. Or this is what I'm familiar with and I really can't go beyond that, but I have somebody else who might be able to help you. It's always trying to find the solution. But sometimes they might be on a time crunch because you're usually given a time limit per call. And so you can't go beyond that and you want to stay within your time. And that can be very pressuring, very stressful because you think of, oh my gosh, if I don't meet my time, they're going to get mad at me or I'm going to get points off or I'm not going to get the bonus or whatever it may be that you're looking towards as your goal is not at risk because of the timing. But let's go back to cooking and baking. So when you cook and you bake, you have a food item, right? We're just going to call it a food item because cooking and baking is different. You have your ingredients, you have your tools, you have an idea more or less of what you're making, you have your instructions, which is either a recipe that you found or that you've made or that you have, and you usually have to follow a time frame. So there's a temperature that has to be set and there's a time that has to be set. So you put it all together, you wait. But what happens while you wait? Close your eyes. Unless you can't, or if you're driving or doing something, don't close your eyes. You can smell it, right? If you're baking some cookies, for example, shout out to doughy cookies. If you're baking some cookies, Zoe, tell me, when you're baking them, can you smell them before they're coming out? Especially the first batches of the day. 
I'm sure you can. The smell just radiates through the house. And if people are in their bedrooms through the vents, they can smell it and be like, mm, that smells great. You can smell the essence of what you created and it's so close to you, you know something new is coming, right? But just because it smells so good, it doesn't mean it's ready. I mean, if the timer hasn't gone off, would you take them out of the oven already? Unless you're impatient. What happens if you're impatient with that time? What happens if you take the cookies out before they're truly done? They could be raw. And if you eat them that way, they can probably make you sick. And more than likely, they won't taste the way they're meant to taste. They might still be okay, maybe not completely raw. And you might think this is decent. But was that the original intention of the flavor that they're supposed to have? Or what if you forget and you leave the cookies longer? They could burn and then they become trash. So now it's wasted. So now that item or whatever you're baking or making those cookies they're wasted it's trash and all of that effort of those ingredients and the time you took and the tools and everything you did to prepare for what was coming for what was new was wasted because it wasn't taken out on time you know sometimes we can believe something's ready or we can take it out too soon leave it too long and forget there's a timing. How does that work in life? So God gives us tools. He gives us resources. He gives us ingredients, a recipe or instructions, right? We prepare, we do, we learn, we walk in faith. We seek his advice, his wisdom, his guidance. We abide by the Holy Spirit, by his word. We abide by what we know he's already instilled within us. We seek counsel if we need to. We study, we're growing, we're learning. We put everything together. Then we have to trust that what's being created in his hands is being worked on. And we have to wait for when it's time. Even if we get antsy, we may feel like we're ready. You know, we're ready. We can smell it. We can almost taste it. We can sense it. We can feel it. And then we decide it's time to use it. But we can't use it before the timer goes off. And we can't get so complacent or have so much fear of what to do when it's ready that we let it sit there and it spoils and it goes to waste. So if it's too early, it's because we're impatient, we're too eager, we're excited. We wanna do it in our own strength because we feel like, okay, God, I got the idea, I understand, I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm maturing. That means I can handle it. So I, I'm gonna make it happen already. Or we're too late, maybe because we have some complacency issues, some laziness, fear or maybe people pleasing. We're afraid of not pleasing the people that matter to us or the people that we think will make us feel like we're on the right path that we become so afraid of actually going once we hear that timer that we overanalyze it, we overthink it, we overcomplicate it and by the time we think that maybe we're ready, we go and it's too late. Like for example, if you think of the Bible in Genesis, think of Sarah and Abraham before they were Sarah and Abraham he was Abram and she was Sarai so she wanted a child they both wanted a child but they weren't able to conceive she was 90 when the Lord told Abram that she would have a son and her reaction to that was laughing thinking that's impossible I mean I'm 90 years old but before that that promise was given to Abram Sarai was so desperate so impatient she didn't want to wait for a timer to go off because in her mind, the timer didn't even exist. The timer wasn't even a possibility. So she made it happen in her own timing. She made her own timer. And she had her slave Hagar sleep with Abram and they had a son, which was Ishmael. Talk about undercooking something. I mean, don't get me wrong. Ishmael was a man, you know, he was loved as he grew. He was blessed. But the covenant that God made with Abraham it was going to pass on through the descendants of Isaac, not through the descendants of Ishmael. Because the promise and the covenant and the final product was to come from Abraham and Sarah and the covenant made with the Lord together producing Isaac. That was a perfect recipe. That was a perfect timing. That was 
exactly what God intended to happen through their life, through their legacy, through their storyline. But they didn't want to wait, or she didn't want to wait, actually. But even though, even through that, even through her moment of desperation and impatience and eagerness and being excited and everything else, he still kept his covenant with Abraham and his wife, Sarah because of everything that Abraham had already been shown by God. A covenant is nothing that he was going to take it back. He wasn't. He wasn't going to, uh, you know, pinky promise and then cross my, my other fingers on my back. God doesn't do that. How many times have you smelled one of his promises and decided you knew when the time was right for it to come to pass? Or maybe you were so afraid of it that you let it go to waste on your life. I'm no one to judge. Trust me. I've done both. And I've learned from both. If God made a promise, I am to let go and trust that he's equipped me to take care of what he needs me to do in the season of waiting and preparation, right? Or if he needs me to fulfill it, then I should be able to. It honestly has taken me trial and error and tons of God's grace, which he gives me every single day. I may know what he has been preparing because he shares with me a glimpse of the promise, but... I know that I've tried to make things happen. Like when you buy a new car and suddenly you begin to see that style and color of car everywhere around you, when before you bought it, it was nowhere to be found. I mean, they didn't suddenly appear after you bought yours. It wasn't like everybody saw you buy yours and they're like, we want the same one and 20 people went and you saw them all around you. You weren't paying attention to your surroundings because you didn't know what you were looking for. You may have not even known to look for something. But sometimes I can become worried or doubt in what God will do through me for something he shows me. And I honestly delay it. But why delay what he needs when he never asks me for anything? I've had to learn to balance the two. I've had to learn to find the rhythm within the two. Because I remember there was a promise he gave me for one of my kids. And I started looking at things and I started thinking, oh... I bet you that's connected. Oh, no, then this is connected. Oh, it has to be because it just makes sense. Well, remember, just because God shows you something or shares something with you, it doesn't mean it's going to align exactly to what makes sense in your logical mind or in your way of thinking or in the way you do things or even more so the way others believe you should do things. So I had to learn quickly. When I'd be like, is it this? Oh, it's that for sure. Oh, I know. I know. I just feel it in my gut. It is that until he said, stop. I gave you a promise and a glimpse of that promise to reassure you that I was with you and to remind you that I hadn't left you and that I see the situation and that I see and I hear your prayers and I know what you're standing in faith for and I am with you. So I give you a glimpse. But I don't give you that glimpse so you can try to take it and make it happen in your own strength the way you want it because you think you're ready. When honestly, if I were to make it happen now, you wouldn't be ready. Because there are other aspects that are tied to this promise that you have yet to see that aren't ready. So instead of saying, I found all of the puzzle pieces to make the puzzle look like you showed it to me, the glimpse you gave me. He said, let go of it. Just enjoy the fact that I gave you a glimpse. You have something to look forward to. You have a promise that you know I will keep. You want to see what I will do. You have faith in me completely. Then let go of trying to put puzzle pieces together that in your mind look like the glimpse I showed you. Because a glimpse I showed you may be a glimpse that made sense to you in your eyes. But that doesn't mean that's exactly what it's going to look like. That means that that's how I had to show it to you for you to believe me, have faith in me, and trust me that I've got it, that I see you, that I hear you, that I know the desires of your heart. So I quickly had to let go. And I don't mean quickly from one day to the next. It took me a little bit. I became a little stubborn. I became kind of like Sarai, like, oh, okay, well, I want this, um, and I think it's going to happen, so let me try to find the way and now don't get me wrong i didn't force anything to happen in action but in my mind i was already creating fairy tales and stories and all of the things right but then i I think no wonder lord you don't show us the whole plan because either we're going to try to force it and make it happen 
or we're going to become so afraid of that plan and not believe that you can work through us to make that happen that will let go that will let go of your promise and fully release it not in a good way out of fear not in faith not hold on to it and move in faith to accomplish what you've already asked us to do so again i had to learn to leave my fears i had to learn to leave my insecurities my doubts the opinions of others aside and do as he prepared me to do do i still ask him questions yeah all the time do i still have moments like moses where i wonder if it's really me or what he told me yes but I still choose to move and not let it sit in the oven as if it will continue to wait for when I'm ready and it won't either go to waste or go to someone else who is willing and ready. Because that's the other thing we have to keep in mind. There could be something that he's asking us to do, yet we're so fearful that he needs it done. And there are others that are out there saying, Lord, I'm ready. Use me, send me. I raise my hand and I say, Lord, whatever you need of me, I am prepared to serve you at any capacity. Serve the people who need you, Father. Therefore, he takes that recipe that's been cooking in your oven, that's been sitting prepared, the timer went off and you've ignored it so many times, and he shifts it over to somebody else's oven. And they're ready for that ding. They're not going to open the oven too soon. They're not going to let it sit there and go to waste or burn. They're prepared, they're armed, and they're just ready for that ding, and they're going to go for it. So don't risk him moving that promise over to somebody else. Because there are times when he'll show you a promise so that you can have continued faith in what he has to do. And who he is. Because you may doubt. There are times when he shows you a promise because he wants you to have a reassurance that you're on the right path. And there are times that he shows you a promise or he shows you a glimpse of what's to come. But it has nothing to do with you. Other than it's going to happen through your obedience and your walk in faith and your heart that's willing to do as he asks of you. But if you're not, then that glimpse of a vision of a sense of that smell that you can sense the essence of it, it'll go away to somebody else. And then you'll sit and wonder, Lord, why aren't you moving through me? Why is nothing happening through me? And he's probably thinking, child, I've tried. But you're not listening to that ding. It's, it went off and you just let it sit there. And then I tried again and it went off and you just let it sit there again. I can't continue to let things go to waste and rot or burn because you're fearful. There are certain things that I have to make happen. And if you're not willing to help me, I'll find somebody else who is. So I encourage you. Trust the recipe. Trust the tools he's given you. Trust the ingredients and the ability and authority God has already given you. And just wait for the time. And once that timer goes off, go for it. And don't delay. Are you ready? Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of She Breaks Free and She Believes podcast. I truly hope that you're able to begin to break free from lies, misconceptions, doubt, unbelief, and anything else that keeps you from living this one life to the fullest according to what God has placed in your heart and woven you in your mother's womb to do. I pray that his love abides in you and that you never forget that his joy is your strength and that you have purpose and are here with intention. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay updated with the latest episodes. And if you choose to connect further with me, head to connect. To forward slash Karina Garcia. That's K O N E C T dot T O forward slash K A R I N A G A R C I A. God bless you.